All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to pick up from where we left off. So we have our menu page and we can actually visit all of the guilds that we're in. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up a couple of forms on the dashboard page. And we're going to allow the user to make API requests to our backend server, our Express app. And that's going to allow the user to update any data or add any data for our database. So you can see right over here, I have this guild configs collection over here or this document. And I have only the prefix and let's say if I want to update the prefix. Okay, so we're going to do that directly from the dashboard page. Now before we do that, we actually need to make sure that on our discord bot, we have the same exact uh, schema. Okay, so if I go over to my discord DJS bot project, I want to make sure that I have the schema which I do. Okay, that's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to honestly just copy this. So this is coming from the discord bot project. And I'm going to go over to the dashboard back and folder. And so this is now the express app. Okay, I know it might, it might, it might be a little bit confusing because I have three folders opened up in Visual Studio Code. Let me zoom in a little bit. But we're going to basically go inside the schemas folder. And I'm going to create the guild config.js file. And I'm going to paste that in. Okay, so once we do that, what we're going to do next is we're going to set up a route so that whenever the user makes the API call from the front end to the back end, the back end will know which route the user is targeting. And then we're going to make the database call and then update whatever we need to update. So the first thing that we're going to do is let's set up the form first. Okay, so we're going to use a package called Formic. It's a very good, very popular uh, package that you can use to build forms in React. So you can read all about it here, but we're only going to build a basic form. So we're not going to do anything super crazy. So to get started with this, we're going to simply just install Formic. So I'm just going to use yarn add Formic. You can use npm i Formic if you want. I'm using yarn. Yarn's a little bit faster, so that's why I'm using it. But you can just do npm install or npm i formic and it'll work just fine. Okay, so we have formic installed. That's good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to import formic. So we're going to import that from formic just like that. Okay, we want to make sure we are importing formic itself from formic. So we have to wrap it in between the curly braces. So I'm just going to import input and button from chakra UI as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started with building out our form. So we're going to start off by specifying a formic component, and then we're going to pass in some props. So we're first going to start off with passing in an initial value. So the reason why we want to do this is because whenever we fetch our data from the database, the guild config, it's going to have the prefix and we want to show the user what the current prefix is. So initial values, we're going to set the prefix. So right now I don't have any uh, data from the database. So, but later on in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to actually connect the back end and the front end together. Now, once we actually connect both the front and the back end together, we're going to expect a prefix. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to create a state variable using the react.useState hook. And I'll just set the default value to a question mark. And so we'll just let the initial value be question mark for now. Okay. After we're done with that, let me actually move this onto the same line. We're going to pass in an on submit prop. So this is going to take in a callback function. Okay, so this function is going to be invoked all the time whenever we click on the button. Well, I'm sorry, it's not going to be invoked all the time. It's going to be invoked only when we click on the submit button. Okay, so that's pretty much all the props we need to pass in. So now inside Formic, inside in between these uh, tags over here, we're going to open up a pair of curly braces and we're going to pass in a pair of parentheses with the props. So these are all the props that are passed from Formic. Okay, so we're going to return basically the form that we want to render. So in between, we're going to render this form over here. I know it looks a bit weird, but trust me, it's not that complicated. So we're going to pass in the on submit prop. And now these props, like I said, are all the props that are part of Formic. So we can actually use these props to uh, invoke certain functions. So for example, whenever the person clicks on the submit button, we can handle submit. Okay, so we can call props on handle submit, which will call this callback function over here. Okay, so now we're going to set up our input field. So we're going to have the type is going to be text. The name is going to be prefix and then we're going to have an on change function. And the reason why we need this is so that way, whenever we update the value in the 
in the input field, it'll actually update it for us, like live update it. So props.change and then default value, whoops, default value. This is where we want to show the default value, which is prefix. Okay. And then now we're going to have a button. Well, let me just show you what it currently looks like right now. So we have our uh, default value. Okay. And now the button itself, we're just going to set the type to be submit. We'll set the color to be orange. So these are all props. And then we'll name the button update prefix. Okay, so watch this. Let's refresh. Okay, so you can see right over here, that if I change the value, it's going to give us a new updated value. Let me refresh again. If I click on update prefix, it's going to be the same value as before. And if I change it to dollar sign, it's going to update. So that's good. So now whenever we are clicking that button, it's going to invoke this on submit function, or it's, it's going to invoke this callback function. Okay, and then inside this callback function, what we're going to do is we're going to invoke the API call that's going to actually update the prefix on the back end. We haven't implemented that route yet, so we'll do that in the next video. So that's pretty much it for this whole tutorial. You can see that in the menu page, we have all of our different guilds. The different guilds currently have the same prefix, but obviously we need to change that up. So in the next episode, we're going to set up the API route that is going to actually update the prefix. And then in the episode after, we're going to connect both of uh, the front and the back end together. So I'll see you guys in that video. Peace.